Come on down to Cinemassacre Video, where selection is the name of the game. We got comedy, drama, action, horror, movies for kids, movies for mom and dad. We got the newest releases, the hottest video games, even Laserdisc. Having a problem making a selection? Our friendly staff is always there to help out, and with our state-of-the-art database software, it's easy to find exactly what you're looking for, even if it sucks. Cinemassacre Video, in the Voorhees Memorial Shopping Center next to Caldor. All right, today we're talking class. This is a movie about love at first sight, friendship, the challenges a friendship may face when put to the ultimate test. It's about the all-American road trip. It's about espionage, mistaken identity, and a headless parrot. We're talking dumb and dumber here. <laughs> uh, it's parakeet. Is yeah, it a parakeet? Much. It's a parakeet. Mm. <laughs> Parrots are huge. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I saw this in the theater. How about you guys? I remember seeing this in the theater. My dad took me and my little sister mm -hmm. to see it. He didn't take us to the theater that much. He wasn't a big movie theater guy. So I, to this day, I don't know why he took us to the movie theater to see it. But yeah, I saw this mm -hmm. as like a four or five year old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, you're a lot younger. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was probably like 14, but yeah. I went into it thinking I was going to hate it, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. Ace Ventura, I didn't really like it when it came out because I thought Jim Carrey was this big attention hog and he was just hamming it up all the time. Yeah. And during that time, I was studying film and I was like, mm. you know, I, I turned my nose up to anything that wasn't like intellectual, classic <laughs> cinema. Yeah. So I went into this like, oh, this movie's going to be stupid. Yeah. It's called Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> but it had me laughing so hard. And it was kind of like that guilty pleasure where after it, I just, I never got enough. I think all these years went by and I never stopped quoting it. And like every time it comes up in conversation, it just livens the mood. It still holds up like we were yeah. talking before this um i haven't watched this movie in a while mm -hmm. and i was able to recall so much from yeah. it it's yeah, yeah. very memorable it does it just sticks yeah. in your mind mm -hmm. i think i've only ever seen it on tv mm -hmm. it's uh, always on cable the first yeah. time i saw it was on cable and like every mm -hmm. time i see that it's on i have to sit and watch it it's like terminator yeah where i'll just sit and just like <laughs> yeah. whatever's going on like i'm, I'm fine watching it's it. one of those movies yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just really good it's uh, probably also jim carrey's i think yeah, I think it's his best movie that he was in as like one of the main characters. Like comedy, as like, uh, comedy yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. his best comedy. I, yeah. I mean, um, I'll look back on Ace Ventura or uh, uh, Liar Liar now, for instance, and I will sit and say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Where he just seems like he's like, look at me, oh my god, I'll be mm -hmm. as ridiculous as I want. This didn't seem like he was doing that. He was ridiculous but so mm. was jeff daniels yeah it was yeah. equal it was they like were equal both very yeah. yeah and it, it wasn't over the top even though it is over the top yeah, yeah. it's yeah. I, I don't know also it's um, written really well yeah. it is yeah yeah so that helps too yeah so the plot simply put jim carrey as lloyd the limo driver falls in love with mary who he just briefly meets for the first time while dropping her off at the airport little does he know she's there to leave a briefcase full of ransom money for some criminals lloyd thinks she forgot the briefcase so he grabs it before the criminals do and talks his roommate harry played by jeff daniels into going on a cross-country road trip with him to return the briefcase while the criminals think they're secret agents and chase them along the way in the 90s, we saw a resurgence of comedy duos, mm. Wayne and Garth, Ren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead, yeah. you know, characters that work best in combinations. Yeah. None, neither would be as funny without the other. Although it was kind of weird because usually before it would be like the, the wacky guy and the straight man. Yeah, but I feel like in the, Costello, yeah. I feel like in the 90s, they were like, oh, they're both just assholes. Yeah, like yeah. Beavis yeah, and Butthead, yeah. there's no like straight man serious character mm -hmm. in that comedy duo. <laughs> so yeah, so um, Harry is able to read a little bit better. There's yeah. a scene where they're reading the newspaper and mm -hmm. uh, he, he, Harry's able to like, you know, help him through. Harry's also the one that thinks the most rational most of the time. Yeah. Lloyd's the one with the big ideas and he's like, oh, we're going to go do this and it's <laughs> yeah. always something stupid. Harry's like, I don't know, Lloyd. But then there's times where Lloyd is smarter because mm -hmm. Because there's uh, near the end when the undercover cop gives Harry a bulletproof vest. Um, he just feels so empowered with it. Like yeah. nothing could go wrong now. He's like, hey, Lloyd, they gave me a bulletproof vest and gave me a gun. And then Lloyd right away says, well, why don't they shot you in the face? And then right away, Harry's <laughs> smile just goes away. Like that never even occurred to him. Yeah. At all. I think the cop was like, that's a risk we're willing to take. Yeah, <laughs> so 
Lloyd is the one who is the decision maker. Like he mm. is the one who comes up with the idea to go on this crazy trip. Um, when they find that there's money in the briefcase, Lloyd right away is like, oh, we're going to spend it all. You know, we're going to leave IOUs. And yeah. the whole time Harry's always questioning it. He's the one who talks Harry into throwing the salt shaker over his shoulder, which gets them in trouble with sea bass, yeah. gaining them another enemy on the road. So Lloyd is just constantly getting them into trouble all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, I love when he's planning the trip. And he's talking about how, like, great Aspen is. And he's describing yeah. something that's very clearly not Aspen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then later it goes to the dream sequence, how he's imagining what it's going to be like when he gets there. And it's all sunny and there's green, like, yeah. shrubs and bushes <laughs> yeah. everywhere because he has no idea. It's, like, real snowy yeah. there. Yeah, and he also confuses Austria with Australia. So there's a lot of geography, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, screw ups. Um, so the real conflict in this movie is where Harry would be totally content staying home in the apartment and just, you know, sitting around... But Lloyd is the one with these big aspirations mm. and crazy ideas, getting them into trouble. So it's really about like, you know, taking risks and doing something outside your your comfort zone. Yeah. Can we can we talk about their home for a second? Sure. All right. So it's a shithole. Yeah. To the point yeah. where like when the bad guys go there, <laughs> they're like, let's trash the place. And the girl's like, I don't know if they're gonna notice. They got worms in their living room. <laughs> because one of the like his idea, their idea, yeah. their grand plan yeah. is to open up a pet store called We Got Worms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To sell no, worms. I got worms. Yeah. Like, people do sell worms. Mm. It happens. Like, yeah. if you live in a town where you can fish, you can get, like, mm. worms at 7-Eleven and stuff. But, like, to mm-hmm. have a whole pet store dedicated to just selling yeah. earthworms mm-hmm. is not a good business model. But I just love, like, they're just like, yeah, they're not going to notice if we trash the place. Yeah. <laughs> well, they also did, like, spend all their money to make the car into a dog. Oh, you know, and stuff like <laughs> It's like... But, uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and also, like, yeah. one of my favorite scenes is the... Uh, when he has to go out and, and go shopping yeah. and he's just mm-hmm. like, all right, man, but this is the last of our money. I'll only get the bare essentials in the next like <laughs> shot. He's <laughs> walking back with a bunch of beer and like snacks and like a cowboy hat. And yeah, then he's yeah. trying to buy uh, the, the magazine and everything. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, funny. Cause you know, no matter like who you are, you always know somebody too, who has made like a bad spending decision or yep. somebody who doesn't have a lot of money. And, and everybody's been in that situation before where yeah. like you don't have enough to spend, but then you buy something you really don't need. Yeah. But it's, you like, know, like a, like a Jafar outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah, 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 being yeah. that big of an idiot. God damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Like mostly cigarettes. Like yeah. I know, I'll, I know I have a lot of friends who smoke yeah. and even when they're completely broke, no matter what, yeah, save I have up friends like, like that too. Yeah, yep. and then it's always like you know they they got a little bit of money in their pockets, like buy a pack of yeah. cigarettes, like that. Or, you know. or in my family, it's lottery tickets. Lottery it's tickets. It's like, hey, maybe yeah, yeah. don't buy the lottery yeah. tickets. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe save some. <laughs> yeah, and even though you know the movie is very extreme, like it goes yeah. far, but it, it a lot of it's relatable. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Yeah. As I said before, the movie is about friendship, also, and mm. the tests of friendship, and. Um, there's also this kind of like moral thing that happens where Harry basically steals Lloyd's girl who they went on this whole trip <laughs> yeah. for, but which is a totally dick move. Mm. But the way it happens, you kind of believe it where Harry didn't do it on purpose. He kind of was just too weak and socially frail to say no. <laughs> yeah. So they're always kind of screwing each other over. Mm. And, um, but in the end they remain friends and it's kind of like this, I don't know, just a cool, uh, it's a really interesting dynamic. Yeah. yeah. And they have no idea that her husband. Like, they, yeah, there's, a yeah. there's never a question about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh well, maybe which you she's kind of forget her. about. Uh, we talked a little bit. Uh, they cut out like deleted scenes where it's the bad guys mm-hmm. with the husband who's captured. But mm-hmm. I think that was smart because no one gives a shit. Like, it's just an excuse for mm-hmm. them to get on this adventure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, keeping the focus but, and on it's also them. funny that they're both pining for her and in your head you're like neither of them are gonna yeah. win like, yeah. she's already yeah. married exactly yeah. it's, it's <laughs> the whole thing's uh, futile Harry yeah. almost has a chance too with the oh, woman at the gas station yeah. oh that's <laughs> yeah. wait, wait, even that well spoiler uh, even the girl wait, at the wait, gas station yeah she's an FBI what are we talking agent? about of course oh, yeah, he has yeah. A, of course he has a chance it's, it's yeah. a million and one chance it's a one in a million chance so you're saying I have a chance yeah and then he lights fire to his pants and the dream scene like that's his idea of winning over the girls oh with like fart yeah where jokes he rips and, like, the heart out of the chef oh, the, and everything the dream scene. we'll get we'll get into our favorite moments <laughs> yeah. soon uh, i will say the um, one in a million thing you know uh just try it out i've been rejected a few times and i tried to pull that line it didn't work but you know let's try it it's fun it's really fun to just try it. <laughs> hey it's a one in a million chance you know yeah <laughs>
We've been talking about uh, Jim Carrey mm. and how this is one of his best movies, but I think, in in my opinion, Jeff Daniels was my favorite. Yeah. Uh, he was mm-hmm. really funny. Yeah. And and everybody thinks about Jim Carrey in this mm-hmm. movie, but I think Jeff Daniels was so underrated with yeah, this, yeah. Like, as a comedic person. And he's amazing mm-hmm. in a lot of things. Like, I, I love him in... One of my favorites, oh yeah, uh, Speed, mm-hmm. where he oh. he, which is weird mm-hmm. that he the, also the, the second yeah. one? Uh, no, he oh. wasn't in that one. He oh. didn't make it to the second one because mm-hmm. uh, no one should have made it to oh, the second that one. Sucks. He uh, been uh, in the Keanu best Reeves movie. couldn't even make it to the second one, so <laughs> it's not the best. Speed anyway, movie. anyway, but, um, but no, what's we, yeah, <laughs> what's weird though is that his name is Harry in this. Yeah. And it's also Harry and Speed, <laughs> so it makes me wonder: like, did he straight? Did did Harry like straighten out and, <laughs> and join the bomb join squad? the LAPD bomb squad with Jack Travis from? Uh, <laughs> he's, he's helping him like disarm bombs on a on a on no, a bus. This or guy is not helping anyone disarm bombs. <laughs> Maybe he got like really smart. Harry. Tell me good news, man. We successfully made it a bulldog with a shih tzu. Yeah, we we called it a bullshit. <laughs> Fuck! I will say, though, uh, as I got older, like, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. Jim Carrey was everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he really was. So he was. was my favorite, but as I get older, I started appreciating Jeff Daniels mm-hmm. in the movie more. Yeah. It's kind of like growing up with Seinfeld. Like, when I was younger, Kramer was my favorite, but mm-hmm. now it's 100% George yeah. is my favorite. And the thing is, it, it's I feel like there are those characters that just really appeal to the kids, and, and when you're a kid, they're hilarious mm-hmm. because they're they're over yeah. the top, and when you get older, you realize, like, the over-the-top stuff is kind of like, all right, the subtlety is mm-hmm. funnier to you Yeah, when you see things that mm-hmm. are just like less but they're way funnier the lines delivery mm-hmm. like jeff daniels is amazing in this yeah, movie yeah. he's great and i think jeff daniels as harry to me is it's one of the funniest roles in the, the 90s yeah, like, yeah i mean if you were gonna go like generation by generation i mean it's like you know on a long list you know charlie chaplin abbott and costello jonathan winters jeff fucking daniels yeah. and dumb and dumber <laughs> it is so great um and he is like the underdog in this movie because Jim Carrey had a lot more, uh, you know, roles to his credit. I mean, before mm-hmm. this, he only did, uh, well, he did a ton of movies, but yeah. he was most known for Ace Ventura and The Mask right before yeah. this. Yeah, and uh, In Living was, Color. Yeah, uh, yeah, Living yeah, Color, yeah, yeah. Which he was, was big. You know, so, yeah, and, and Jim Carrey has a very big style of acting. You know, he, mm-hmm. he, he's, and that, you know, that's what he does. That's what he does best. Um, Jeff Daniels has like the perfect complement to that because he he's a little bit more grounded in reality. Mm-hmm. Like you could actually take certain screenshots of his face from this movie where he's just kind of like he's got that redness around his eyes and his hair is all over in his mm-hmm. face. And like where, any scene where he looks sad, it could look like a drama if you didn't yeah. know what movie you were looking at. Yeah, so I, I think he kind of comes out as the unlikely star. Like he he is... He, he steals the show. Yeah. I yeah, mean, and he is really... You're right. He compliments Jim Carrey. Because like, when I think of Jim Carrey mm-hmm. movies, we think of overacting and him yeah. stealing. And this is a movie where they they bounce off each other. Yeah. Like, he's able no, to keep were, up yeah. with Jim Carrey yeah, without yeah. imitating Jim Carrey. Uh-huh. It's crazy how he did it. Yeah. yeah, and he has this, like, kind of, like, the, these facial expressions, like, like a humble dog. Like, he's just <laughs> kind of, like... Like, he's just really kind and faithful. I mean, he just has this, like, this hysterical laugh... Mm-hmm. And um, well, a very realistic laugh. I've known many people who have that same kind of laugh where it, you're kind of just, your laughter is being choked back and mm-hmm. nothing comes out except these like high pitched yeah. little giggles. <laughs> and when his body language, when he moves, like his hair just shakes all yeah. the time. <laughs> I think that's what the thing about him is, is that while Jim Carrey is the over the top, you know, overacting, mm-hmm. he's not as overacting. He has certain yeah, yeah. scenes that are like insane. But mm-hmm. he's the more believable of the yeah, two, and he yeah, grounds yeah. the two of them as mm-hmm. okay. I can understand like Jim Carrey is this crazy idiot mm-hmm. that yeah, is yeah. friends with this <laughs> other idiot that's not as crazy, but yeah, yeah. he's still an idiot. <laughs> like it's uh, it, it, that's the thing yeah. about him. Like he just has the the very groundedness, more down to earth than Jim Carrey is. Mm-hmm. But they complement each other so well. It's mm-hmm. like the 
the positive to the negative or the, yeah. the yeah, base yeah. to his the, acid, yeah. you might say. <laughs> There's a really great quote Jeff Daniels says on uh, one of the DVD extras mm -hmm. where he says right before the cameras would roll, he would just shake his head to slosh his brain around to get rid of any intelligence he had as a person. <laughs> <laughs> and you could totally see that with every scene. It kind of looks like he's just a little bit dazed, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that might be the thing, too, is like Jeff Daniels is, is an actually a really good serious actor mm -hmm. on top of like being in, com in oh, comedic roles. I uh, see The Martian. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He played the head of NASA. Yeah. So he went from the dumbest character to the most yeah. intelligent. <laughs> he, uh, he was also recently, he was in a, a Hulu series, The Looming Tower, and mm. it's incredible. He's, he's so good in it. Yeah. I think that's the thing is like being from there, you have two different basically like background actors. You have a comedic only almost mm -hmm. stand up sketch comedy and you have a like classic trained actor that in yeah. drama mm -hmm. that can do multiple roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why they work so well off yeah. of each other is because he knows how to act. He knows how to be extremely mm. funny. And that's what I think like works so well with their dynamic. Yeah. Obviously, they're the two stars of this movie. Mm. But if you were to go like um, next level, like who, who's the next supporting role? I think Mike Starr is really funny. Yeah. Um, he was the, the guy who played um, producer George Weiss in Ed Wood. Yes. Uh, and, he, and it's the same type of character. He's just this really loud, angry, yeah, angry. hot yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's great. What do they call him? Uh, the gas the, the man. Gas man. <laughs> the gas man. <laughs> he's like, how do they know I have gas? <laughs> oh, he's like, oh, these guys must be good. <laughs> yeah, so him and his partner, they, they, they work for the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And they, they really think that... Harry and Lloyd are these like super geniuses yeah. outsmarting them. And I love like skipping ahead a little bit. I love when he like finds out like, oh, you guys are just idiots. Yeah, and, and it's like this. finally he's kind of cool with them and once and he then realizes that. he then dies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After going on like the worst journey oh. with them that you could oh, ever God. And I love when he punches the guy through oh, the through the glass. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Well the, the funny thing oh. is like about that is that um, they're supposed to be smarter than Harry and Lloyd, yeah. but Harry and Lloyd are so dumb that they outsmart the guys that are supposed <laughs> exactly. to be smart because they think that they're way smarter than they are when they're not. And then uh, he has one of the most memorable scenes in the movie mm. during the road trip mm. when they do the, uh, you want to hear the, the most mock. annoying sound oh, in yeah, the world? Yeah. <laughs> and then when they sing and like, I, yeah, yeah. I, you've, it's very relatable. Mm. I've been in cars with people mm. that I hate who won't <laughs> shut up and I felt like him when he's trying to keep it together <laughs> and he's like there's um, uh, another thing I, I just want to bring up about mm -hmm. uh, about Mike Starr. The scene when when he finally does die, yeah. and they're just and he's like talking to them, and they're like, "Yeah, why don't you, why don't you eat your burger?" And they keep like <laughs> they, put all, like, spicy they stuff. put all the peppers on it and stuff, yeah, yeah. and they're just like, "They're like, yeah, that's really cool. How about you take a bite of your burger?" And they just keep trying to get me eat the burger. The look on Jeff Daniels' face, where, like he's like eating his food, and he's like his eyes, yeah, are just he's looking just like over looking at him. Over. It's so I good. love that they murder. Him. Yeah, they basically <laughs> murdered him, and the bad guys are like intimidating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take him <laughs> like, oh my god, they killed him, and then and then they 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 killed our owls too. And yeah, they, they killed the, the, the owl, the endangered owl. Uh, let's, talk, let's talk about moments. Let's just favorite moments. Okay, uh, my favorite moments. Um, there's and, and uh, you can name more than one. Okay, okay. I, I have three top moments. Okay. It's uh, when they take the wrong turn to go to mm -hmm. Colorado and they end up like somewhere in the mm -hmm. south and they're looking, they're in the desert looking around mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I thought the Rockies would be more rocky and they just go, ah, Bob Denver's full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the next one is the landed on the moon. I think you know that one. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Like, wow, we've finally done it. <laughs> so Harry's gone his whole life not knowing we landed on the moon, and he sees this framed newspaper, and he thinks it's like today's. <laughs> He's like, oh, my God, that's unbelievable. And then my favorite, most relatable moment is when they're in the hot tub in the honeymoon Oh, it's a great scene, yeah. And uh, he's talking about, like, the backstory that uh -huh. they have. And he's like, yeah, you know, my girlfriend, she broke up with me. Uh, she always would say stuff how I, like, wasn't, uh, I would never listen. And I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. Yes. And, like, I had super, relate. like, even yesterday, my girlfriend was saying something while I was building something. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then she, like, asked me to follow up on what she said. I'm like, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I had no idea. Like, he's still oblivious. He's still, he's still oblivious. Get it. And then also in that same scene, they're talking about this, like, ex-girlfriend. Yeah. And he finds out that the the guy who she cheated on uh, Harry with yeah. was Lloyd. Yeah. But it's it's in the like 
it does. They don't spell it out, but you can tell just in their faces yeah. as they're talking. Like until she was seeing another guy, yeah. and he's just like, "Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah, exactly." <laughs> it, it just gets like really awkward. Which I thought that story would be explored in the prequel, but it was not. But we're not going to get into that. It was explored yet. in the sequel, though. But I heard um, about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I haven't seen either the prequel or the sequel. Yeah. I kind of just act like this is the only one. Yeah, I mean, you it know? is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. But we'll get to those at the yeah. end here. Yeah. Um, I mean, one scene that. I mean, there's so many, but mm. this movie begins with a credit sequence that has misspelled credits like producer, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. director. That's pretty yeah. funny. Yeah. When I saw that as a kid, I just laughed like, like, because <laughs> I had never seen a movie that did that. Like, I didn't even know you were allowed mm. to do that to like misspell. Yeah, the, yeah I mean, right. they, didn't, they didn't misspell the names, but they had the, the mm. caps in the lowercase. But the the titles were all like director and all that. Mm. I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> um, it was such a a, a clever idea yeah. to do a stupid thing like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably my favorite line in the movie, maybe, is um, a, a, as just a standalone joke that would work in any situation was, uh, we once made it a bulldog with a shih tzu. Oh. We called it a bullshit. <laughs> but what sells the scene is how Harry just cracks yeah, up laughing. Yeah, the like second that. he said it, yeah. Because <laughs> everybody's known somebody who laughs at their own jokes. Like, everybody's done it before. Yeah, probably me. I laugh <laughs> yeah. at jokes constantly. Yeah, I've done it. Like, yeah. where you, you just say the joke <laughs> and then just start losing it. So there's a lot of funny scenes in this movie. But I think probably my favorite is the snowball fight. <laughs> um, where <laughs> Harry's on the date with Mary, yeah, and th the scene is kind of like sweet, but it's it's silly at the same time. Mm. But it's the moment that does it for me is when she playfully throws the snowball at Harry, and then you see his smile just fade. Yeah, like he <laughs> he takes it personal, uh, and then he he builds up this uh, snowball, and he just yeah, slams like, it in her face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. face. Yeah, and, and then they then they start like you know fighting and then like he, he like tackles her and then they're like rolling down the hill and then they get up again they start laughing again it, the scene yeah. has all these different like you know different uh, tones i love how he doesn't understand when she gives him the stuff for the snowman for the face yeah, yeah. he doesn't get it he like makes it a dick for the yeah, snowman. yeah. <laughs> and, and and he, he he's legitimately embarrassed when he finds that like he it wasn't a joke yeah. he actually thought that was where <laughs> <laughs> what the intention was i also really like when they when they become rich for a moment when they have the money in the briefcase mm -hmm. uh because like we said before you know it's just funny to think what certain people will do when they have a lot of money and mm. don't know really what to do with it so this is what they would spend it on and he just buys all these ridiculous clothes <laughs> yeah and um <laughs> the, the matching the outfits car. he yeah, buys like yeah. a super car yeah. like a, <laughs> that, that like one a suit that he has it, it, or that one like ski suit or whatever yeah. but then you see the feet and it's got these fluffy white yeah. things on it <laughs> Uh, um, I love the car at the end with the bad guy. He's like, what is this? Oh, these are IOUs. Yeah, goes, when they and get he, and the he goes, money, he goes, finally. He goes, this one's for a car. You're going to want to hold on to that yeah. one. <laughs> it's just like all post-it notes just yeah, like yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's also, of course, the dream scene. And what's funny about the dream scene is just that it, it, everything in that scene is going entirely how Lloyd would picture it. So mm. You get into his head more than you ever think. Mm. And you're sort of just stuck with him at that point. Like, this ridiculous character, you're just in his mind. So you ha almost have no choice but to empathize with him. Like, yeah. okay, this is his fantasy. This is how he wants everything <laughs> to go. And it's got everything from a kung fu fight yeah. to, yeah. like... A ridiculous Where, where he tears fight. the heart of someone <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chef like i remember seeing that as a kid yeah. the first time i ever saw this movie too that was the first scene i saw oh god so that's, we that's... came in like way into it it was it was on like um what's it called like hbo would just show mm -hmm. movies mm -hmm. constantly like in a loop most mm -hmm. of the time and uh it was there like we were watching we were like what movie is this that like jim carrey yeah, yeah. ripped the guy's heart out and then we ended up <laughs> yeah, like yeah. watching it it's just scene after scene after scene and you're in this dream like yeah. the whole time and i love the end where she takes her shirt off and then it's like headlights <laughs> yeah, from the truck yeah. and it's like hi he wakes up yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this movie has a piss joke a shit joke a puke joke it's a bodily function home run um, yeah uh, Grand Slam, even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, about the shit joke, um, yeah. the toilet scene. Of course, I'm going to have to talk yeah. about this Well, one. this was the other scene I was going to say is one mm -hmm. of my favorites that I, I was like, I know we're, mm -hmm. we were going to yeah. save this yeah, one, yeah. so I didn't want to like... Set it up. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, so it's basically the... The biggest nightmare I think anyone could ever have if they have to take a dump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Harry's got a shit. Mm -hmm. He runs into the toilet. He starts shitting immediately then. She says, hey, I hope you're not, you know, using the toilet because it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So now he has to figure out after he took a huge dump, yeah. what, like yeah. how he's going. And, and he's, that, that meanwhile, music. he's trying to yeah. date this woman. And that music when he's on the toilet and he figures that out, that music that plays, I can't, I can't remember if that's from Twilight Zone or something. Yeah. And anyway, if anybody knows what that sample's from, mm, let yeah. us know. But this scene is first of all just to talk <laughs> to talk about it like if this were a film class i would show this as the perfect marriage between facial acting and sound design yeah, yeah. because the sa i'm willing to guess the sound did not come first first it was just jeff daniels doing this acting mm -hmm. with his face and just you know improvising it mm -hmm. and then the sound designer would come in and just add the sounds to to every reaction, but it's the perfect <laughs> reaction. Like you don't see any shit in the scene, yeah. But it no, puts yeah. a vivid mental yeah, picture it in is, your head. It's really like yeah. But I had never heard any sound effect like that <laughs> in a movie. It where was, I mean, it's just it was like pretty gnarly. hearing yeah. farts as and, a kid is one of the funniest things ever. But this scene just. I mean, you ramps hear just, that yeah. to an insane degree. It, like it's just um, you hear it just spilling yeah. into the toilet. Uh, yeah, and then it's at like, the end, there's that <laughs> little squeak. Yeah, where, and like, he laughs at it. That, yeah, like he makes this little like. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> I almost like pissed myself watching this yeah, as a yeah. kid. Like yeah. I had never seen anything like at this point in my life. Mm. I yeah, had yeah. never seen anything in my life this funny. Uh -huh. And this scene just like killed me when I was like, yeah, I. I, I I it's mean, talk like about 11. relatable. I mean, that's yeah. something yeah. else that must have happened. Nowadays, to everybody. Yeah. let me tell you, yeah, that that not is like the word. Right. So much, it's but... one of those things that has <laughs> happened to everybody that you don't really want to talk about. But, but it's one hundred percent worse though, because not only do you suddenly have to take a really bad shit in someone's house, yeah. The toilet is now broken. Also, it is now your first date, yeah, and it's yeah. at yeah. her house. Like, and that's I, the like, worst I mean, I don't even, and, combination. And he's trying to do everything. To, he's like, flush, you bastard. <laughs> yeah. and here's the thing. The DVD has an unrated version, which has yeah. some uh, cut footage. Now, for the most part, the cut footage really isn't necessary. Like yeah. um, Seabass puking on the burger. They actually show him puke on the burger, which you uh, do not need to yeah, see. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, the, scene with, the scene in the toilet, they mm. cut something which was the worst decision to cut ever because okay. it was the fu it made that scene 10 times funnier. Okay. The solution, what he does to mm. fix the toilet he unbolts it from the floor, carries it to the window to dump it out. <laughs> and still keep in mind, you do not see any shit. Yeah. But it is so funny. And <laughs> they actually use the audio from it in the scene when, when Mary is, is, is at the door and she's like, like, Harry, you know, what, what, what are you doing in there? You know, and you hear him inside. That's the audio from the, the, the cut footage. Oh, uh, okay. So why they decided to cut that bit. That's I think funny. is one of the worst decisions. I said one of the one of the funniest things in that scene mm -hmm. is that they do a call back to something earlier in the movie. Like they're watching the the TV while he's in the bathroom and it's about like uh Petey, the blind kid or oh, the blind, they, oh, so the yeah, bad guys yeah, yeah. kill the parakeet. Yeah, yeah they we rip its head off. Uh -huh. And they get uh, they decided to duct tape it and they give and it they to give it to the blind kid. They give kid. Petey to the blind kid at, for twenty bucks. And then you find out about <laughs> So like as you're laughing and at all like this stuff, bird. it's a callback to like an earlier joke yeah. that you forget about. At that point in the movie you totally and then forget like, that who happened. Would, who would do that to a poor blind boy? Yeah, like, not noticing the the guy who did it is like in the bathroom. Oh um, man! But to give it a little context, uh, when Jeff Daniels uh, was offered the role and he read the script, mm. you know, like like we said, he wasn't as well known as Jim Carrey. He didn't mm. do any comedies like this before. This was something that he had never done, mm -hmm. and um, he he showed the script to his agents, and they said this will ruin your career. Oh, like, do wow. do not do this. Jim Carrey will walk all over you. The whole movie is going to be about him. But then a friend of his like read and, and read the toilet scene and was like, you know, this is kind of funny. I mean, you should just take a chance, go for yeah. it. You know, back to the theme of you know taking risks. So obviously he did the movie. After it came out, he was at a golf tournament, and uh, Clint Eastwood walked up to him, <laughs> and he goes. I saw Dumb and Dumber, and the, and Jeff, you know, was like, like, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry," you know. And he's like, "No, no, no, that, that toilet scene was the funniest thing I ever seen." <laughs> wow. And he said, and Clint Eastwood shared a personal story with him and said that the exact same thing happened to him, where he was on like a first date and he had the shit in the toilet and it was broken, 
And he said when he saw that movie, like that was the funniest thing. <laughs> so the moral of the story there is, you know, to, to take a chance. Like you go from doubting it and thinking yeah. this movie's going to ruin your career mm. to next thing Clint Eastwood is praising <laughs> the scene where you shit in a yeah, toilet. Right? Yeah, right. Like, All right, so we're getting closer to wrapping this up, but let's talk about the music really quick. Okay. So there, there's some score, but most of it are actual songs, mm. and they're all very random picks that are, most of them are, are They're 90s. every feel-good um, uh, movie trailer <laughs> they are, song of the I 90s, will say the, basically. the first song, what was it called? The Boom, boom Shakalaka. Yeah, yeah, boom yeah, Shakalaka. Boom I feel like I heard boom, that boom, everywhere. Boom. I think it might really? be wow. in um, Biodome. Boom. Oh, it was okay. in trailers for huh. movies. Yeah, no, back it's in like yeah. it, it's it like that everything. song. The uh, what's it called? It's not on oh. the official soundtrack to Dumb and Dumber. I'll tell you that. Yeah, oh, I know. really? It's, it's in so the trailer on. for Dumb and Dumber. Or I remember watching that really? in the theater, being like, "Oh, huh. oh, that's wow. what's going on here." <laughs> yeah, if you if you buy the official soundtrack to Dumb and Dumber. Mm. Buy it only if you want to hear every random minor song that you'll never remember. Like, what's the song that plays in the diner in the background while they're talking about the <laughs> soup du jour? And it, you'll never remember them. If, yeah. if you don't remember it, it really shouldn't be on the soundtrack. Yeah. But they don't have the, the Boom Shakalaka song. Mm. They don't have uh, the dream scene music. Um, uh, the, oh, is that the flower? The flower. Girl? Yeah. It's actually uh, called uh, The uh, Park uh, uh, and the park and other things or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay. like a 60s um, tune. They don't have the song uh, when Harry's hitchhiking. They don't have the song uh, Pretty Woman, which is when they're trying oh, on the yeah. tuxedos. Huh. So it's like a lot of major... What's on the, the what's soundtrack? On? <laughs> like, what is even on well, it? Like They do have... Like, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I mean, they do have New Age Girl, um, and they have a lot of them. I New, feel like New Age every, Girl was the... Uh, we, we always talk about the soundtracks of these movies. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, uh, we we talk, we talk brought up, like, Mortal Kombat yeah. and, mm-hmm. and Last Action Hero, and every song that is memorable from the movie is in it. Mm-hmm. So to find out that they the, use so many damn songs in this and then they didn't even license them for a soundtrack, yeah, it's like, why? Yeah. Like, why do that? Uh huh. Yeah, New Age Girl was on the radio a lot, um, mm. so that one at least made the soundtrack. But uh, that's good. I mean, it's it's halfway there. The the official mm. soundtrack is halfway there, but it just doesn't. They mm. they drop the ball. Mm. At least put um, Boom Shakalaka in there. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't believe it's not there. <laughs> I just like that all the songs in this kind of just characterize the '90s. It's yeah. just like a whatever generation. Yeah. These kind of fits. these kind of movies just always have that like they do they have a scene and then a, and whatever. Yeah. Hit of of nineteen ninety four. Yeah, yeah, yeah like I know. The, and if you want to call me, me baby, baby. No. like I don't know. I always imagine like, like very short. Yeah, uh, it's like, a time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, they just. It's always like these certain songs that are just spin doc. You're doing yeah, spin oh, yeah, doctors. Spin doctors yeah. yeah, I feel like that's oh, that one huge. of like the yeah, yeah. which and is not like two songs, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, but every song in this sounds like stuff like that. Like whenever I hear any song from Dumb and Dumb, which is rare now but mm. whenever i hear one it's like that's a dumb and dumber song yeah, yeah. it's like that's always uh, what it's gonna be good. so in conclusion sometime after this movie came out i just want to say like maybe it was 10 years after it came out somebody once called it uh, a classic i was mm. talking okay oh dumb and dumber yeah yeah that movie's a classic and then i thought about it and i think that's what changed my mind on what a classic could be because mm-hmm. before this i always thought well to be a classic, it's got to be like from the 30s or 40s. It's got to preferably black and white, you know, golden age stuff. But now, yeah, I will say Dumb and Dumber is a classic. Oh, it's 100% oh, for sure. a classic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And you could this movie like stands the test of time. You could show this to like someone today. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the yeah. same way we were watching Three Stooges. Yeah, you you know, fifty um, years from now, I guarantee you, there's going to uh, be people watching. My one this. cousin, yeah, yeah. my one cousin got a parakeet for her kids, and they mm. named it Petey because of this movie. <laughs> and they're like way younger than us, yeah. but that's how much the movie oh. had an effect on them. I mean, yeah. we have to get used to the idea of, of the fact that like we've lived through a time that years and years from now people are going to be looking back on no. going that was mm-hmm. some of the best movie making you can do <laughs> yeah. you know back in 1994 <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know no. when it's 20 That's the test 2063 yeah. or whatever yeah. it is yeah, like yeah. you know people are going to be like sitting back looking at this yeah. and it going very... man jim carrey god rest his soul <laughs> yeah, know, one of the right? yeah. biggest comedic geniuses ever yeah. and, and all this stuff you know yeah, when he won that academy award for sonic it was real shocking <laughs> but it wasn't as good as dumb and dumber that's probably a real conversation oh, no. that'll happen wow yeah <laughs> So, if you want to talk about the sequels really quick, um, uh, yeah. uh, well, I first don't of all, because I never saw them. So. <laughs> yeah. um, very briefly, because it you know just because it comes up, I'm glad we did not take any time away from the original to talk about these because it would not be worth it. No. But 
There was a cartoon, which I did not know about. I knew there was a mask in Ace Ventura cartoon. Mm. I didn't realize. I remember. Yeah. I remember the Dumb and Dumber cartoon. Yeah. I used to watch it every Saturday morning. Oh, it was really? on ABC. And they had a they had a raccoon named Kitty. Okay. Huh. And they, yeah. I Was it anything God. like the movie? Or? It's more like, you ever watch Two Stupid Dogs? Yeah, I remember watching that. I've heard of it. It's like Two it. Stupid Dogs. Kind of oh. like, uh, it was that weird. It, it mm. was Harry and Lloyd. And it was pretty good. I forgot it, oh, completely God. about that. Did they capture it like the the characters, like personalities? Yeah, like, like there it... was an episode where like they their whole thing is uh, they go to a casino and they want to go into a buffet and they keep calling it a buffet, <laughs> and and they're <laughs> they're Jimmy trying Buffett. to get the money and, yeah. and it's like that that'll be the episode. Like it was real classic style, like two character cartoon, and they have the the non talking sidekick, which was Kitty, oh, okay. their pet raccoon that they have. The only thing I oh. saw of it when I was preparing for this review was I I, I looked up the opening uh, intro on YouTube and the whole intro is nothing but just them dancing the mm -hmm. whole time like there's no <laughs> situations or anything else. That's weird. But but that's cool to know that it's it's it's, it's worth pretty checking funny. Out. It's yeah it's it's goofy and it's mm -hmm. it's like a real goofy show. It's it's like it's the same kind of style as like Two Stupid Dogs was. Mm -hmm. And I like the design of each character. They did that whole like. Almost like Hanna Barbera looking mm -hmm. character design. Okay. But like later Hanna Barbera. Okay. Which also the two stupid dogs was Hanna Barbera mm -hmm. too. But so then there was Dumb and Dumber Er, which uh, I, I when I first heard the title I thought that was brilliant. Like that's mm -hmm. a great title. Although they had to ruin it with, they also call it. They give it a subtitle: "When Harry Met Lloyd." It's yeah. like uh, you didn't need that. Yeah. But but anyway, the movie itself um, sucks. It, it does. Um, but <laughs> it really sucks. There it's not is like Sherry O'Terry, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, because first of all, it's a it's a prequel, mm. and it does not have Jim Carrey or Jeff Daniels. So that was already a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, it's a prequel when they're younger. But why did it have to be a? prequel? They look pretty close. Um, those guys, do, yeah. you know. Like they oh, the one guy him. went on to do a lot. Of, the guy who plays mm -hmm. the younger Jim Carrey, he's been in a lot of mm -hmm. shit. So, like, that didn't hurt him at all. Uh -huh. It didn't help. Yeah, so I had not seen it since it came out. So, But it's one of those movies you just forget. Mm -hmm. Except for one scene. One scene. And I think everybody agrees. Yes. The Bob Saget scene. Yeah. So they have a chocolate bar and they end up smearing it all over a room and Bob Saget comes in and it's his house and he thinks it's like it's, they shit all over the place yeah. or something. And Bob Saget just flips the <laughs> fuck out. He's like, there is fucking shit. shit. There is shit everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, other than that, there's really nothing notable. I think Shia LaBeouf is in Dumb and Dumber. Oh, it, really? If I'm remembering mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I remember I got it on... It's one of the last VHS tapes I bought, like, mm -hmm. new. Because I didn't see it in theaters. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, let me check this out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, well, this is the worst purchase I've ever made. This is terrible. Yeah. But then they totally redeem themselves, <laughs> almost, with Dumb and Dumber 2. <laughs> so 20 years later, they made a sequel. I think they only did it because they got so much fan praise mm -hmm. for the original and, and they just knew that there was a lot of fans out there because up until this point jim carrey he didn't usually do sequels you know mm -hmm. the sequel the mask didn't have jim carrey no, he yeah. did the sequel to, too he did that, that. the sequel to bruce <laughs> almighty evan almighty he's you not know, in that right the it's, mask yeah. too uh, son, of, son <laughs> of the mask yeah yeah no i mean like the the one uh <laughs> nintendo power yeah the nintendo yeah, power yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah, like yeah, i know <laughs> <laughs> you win a, a roll in the mask too. Yeah. If, we, if we ever do, well, that was of, a, a pfft, yeah, yeah. Real, real um, quick, real quick. If we ever do Son of the Mask, can we hunt down that Nintendo Power winner and have him on. The yeah. show? Oh my god, yeah, that would be yeah. pretty. Look, funny. Yeah, we know yeah, yeah. we need to make it in mask too, but uh, here's you can be the review for mask. Yeah, yeah that's, mask that's too. Great. <laughs> that's a great angle. Boy, that that'd be funny. <laughs> so 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 uh, the, the sequel. It, to sum it up. It's okay. Like it's okay. it's not bad. I think um, what what one of you guys saw? Which one? I have not seen. No, no, okay. I saw the okay. prequel, not the sequel. <laughs> okay, so my advice is, if you want to see more of those characters, there's no reason not to watch it because hmm. 20 years have passed, but they're still the same characters. Like they didn't change anything about the personalities. It's still Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels doing what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, so that part's good. They got the characters right. Nothing wrong there. Sure. Um, the only th uh, problem I have with it is the plot is a little bit overcomplicated. Okay. Um, where they kind of have, you know, there's criminals in that one as well. Basically, Harry uh, needs a liver transplant. Not a liver, uh, a kidney transplant. Okay. 
and he can only get it from a family member. Then he finds out he has a long lost daughter. So they go on this road trip to find the daughter. Now, don't you think finding the long lost daughter would have been enough of a plot? Like without yeah. the yeah, kidney, yeah, yeah, without the kidney thing. Mm. And uh, spoiler alert: I don't think anybody cares. Yeah. Um, but uh, then it turns out the daughter is really Lloyd's instead. And then wait a minute. The daughter is nobody's. It's neither of theirs. Okay. And then Harry doesn't really need the kidney transplant at all. It's a total cop out. Oh, (laughs) also, there's this box that they're carrying on the trip, which is supposed to have some invention in it that's going to like save mankind or some Mm. really important thing is in this box. And that's what the criminals are going after. And all this crazy shit's going on. Well, at the end, there's nothing in the box either. It's it's just cupcakes. So every (sighs) single plot thread is just a cop out in the end. And um, Mm -hmm. so I thought they just put a little bit too much thought into that part. Mm. Otherwise, the situations are there. There's a part where they're trying to steal um, uh, hearing aids from an old lady in like a retirement home or something. Mm. And... Wow, boy, is it an awkward scene. It's hilariously <laughs> awkward, but she like tricks them into reaching into a certain place to get them. <laughs> and afterwards, she gives, and she has this this creepiest grin where she's like, "You boys deserved it." And <laughs> it's so awkward, but um, wow, um, so funny. What you got? And doesn't uh, the the little boy come back? The one with the yeah, the, the boy parakeet? with the parakeet comes yeah. back. I hear and, he has like a bunch of like parakeets. Yeah, now they have a bunch of parakeets, and they they trick him into taking their cat in. Yeah, and. <laughs> slaughters all the birds but this cat also just to back up um mm. lloyd is absent for a long time because he's in the he's pretending to be in this retirement home for 20 years yeah and meanwhile harry needs to get a, a new roommate and by the way all the same sets are used like it's the same apartment oh, really? everything's oh, wow. exactly the same oh wow. but he needs to get a new roommate to replace lloyd so they turn the other room and it's this guy with like a mask like chopping up all this glass so he's doing all this like he's making meth in the other room yeah. oh and then no. while they're talking there's like this background joke where yeah. the cat sniffs the meth and then next thing uh, they're talking about something else, yeah. but in the background, you see the cat hanging on the chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So there's there's funny stuff in it. Um, uh, there, there's a part where they take an envelope that uh, they're supposed to deliver. Um, it's like an unsent envelope. Mm. And instead, they go to the return address, so they come back to the exact same house. <laughs> stuff like that. So there's good stuff uh, in it, but it's nowhere near as good as the original. Yeah. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. It's still worth seeing, but yeah. not as good. 